My name is Amora Carvajal. I'm the director of the commercial trade office of Peru here in the Netherlands, and also for Belgium, Luxembourg, and Scandinavian countries. After me, we're gonna have the intervention of Lisette. She's from Lima, from, from Peru, and she's in charge of all the textile industry as well. So, so she will give us a little bit of inside information about, about what's going on in Lima and uh, about, of course, uh, Peru Moda. You know that for us, as from Peru, Peru Moda is very important, uh, as, this, um, as this is a very important fair that we have a lot of international uh, companies joining us, and it's the important moment that we, as Peru, can show you the whole industry we have and the whole opportunities you can have as uh, as companies, as foreign companies, if you uh, do your sourcing or you buy directly from Peru. And in this uh, this opportunity, we have our special keynote speaker, Juan Pepe, who is the commercial director of Michel. It's a very one of the top um, companies of Alpaca. So he's going to give us some information about what's going on, the Alpaca cluster as well. And afterwards, we have also the uh, the another speaker, uh, Mayra Navarrete, and she's based in Denmark. So she um, she has also she's gonna she's gonna um, uh, show us and share us a little bit of her experience as buyer. So that's uh, we think it's very interesting. And after that, we can have a small um, opportunity to have questions and answers. And yes, maybe have like a, a nice conversation among us. And so, okay, let's uh, let's start. So this is like a broad introduction about what is from Peru and what uh, from Peru is the board of promotion of uh, tourism and trade. And we are the commercial offices and we are like mostly more than 20 commercial offices. Uh, around the world. Of course, very important is our region, Latin American region, also the States and Europe. And we also have some uh, some of my colleagues in, in Asia as well. And now, well, with this um, this uh, COVID has, uh, give, has shocked us really uh, a lot of us and actually not just in business matters, but also personally. And we think that it's very important for you to know that uh, why is it important to have like a broad, um, broad um, group of suppliers, not just one supplier and not just like putting all the eggs in one basket, no? And that's why it's important also to consider Peru as an important uh, yeah, partner for your company. Okay. Okay. Uh, which are the next upcoming events? Well, we have this Peru Moda, and um, afterwards we are like, yeah, we can't have this Peru Moda uh, lightly, so now we are trying to have this other um, sort of webinars uh, connecting one um, foreign company with a, a, a Peruvian company, so you can learn what are the possibilities a little bit about this. And the other thing that's very important we want to show you and we want to to share with you is that we are planning to have our Peru Moda in Europe, that based in Amsterdam. So at the first beginning, we, we plan to have it this year and this June, that of course, according to circumstances, we need to switch it to or end of this year or maybe beginning of next year. So this is, we will keep you posted about this, of course. And this is also another nice opportunity for you companies that can come here to one city in Europe and to like have a little bit of this like feeling about what is Peru, not just in Alpaca, of course, this webinar is about Alpaca, but also about cotton. Um, and so we will keep you posted about what's going on and what are the possibilities for you to work with Peru. And now I will give uh, some, uh, some words to Lisette. From, from Peru and she's in Lima, so she maybe can give us also some information and share with us something. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, I'm Lisette, I'm here in Lima, and well, we are very happy to have you in this webinar. So uh, I want to introduce uh, the Alpaca del Peru uh, brand. So uh, more than 
five or seven years ago, we started to promote our industry and we decided to create a, a brand, a national brand that involves all the industry uh, regarding the alpaca. So uh, in the next uh, slides, you will see more information. And also I would like to let you know about our national fair trade certification. Uh, or, already we have uh, more than 30 companies that uh, have this certification. So we are working very hard to improve uh, this area, this uh, specific uh, demanding of the market. So uh, you will see in the next uh, guest, and I would like also to introduce to our uh, Mr. Juan Pepper. Uh, he is the commercial manager from Mitchell and he will uh, give you more insights and the overview of the industry, of the alpaca industry. So uh, start, uh, Mr. Pepper. Hello, everybody. I, I hope you guys are, are fine and enjoying, uh, enjoying the, the lockout uh, that uh, <laughs> really has caught us all by surprise. Uh, anyway, um, Today I'm going to talk about uh, about alpaca. That's the topic that I'm, uh, I've been asked for, to talk. Uh, first of all, uh, I've been in the industry for uh, for over 30 years. Uh, I'm currently the sales director for Mitchell and Company. Uh, I will give you a very brief introduction to Mitchell and Company. Uh, okay. Our company was founded uh, 89 years ago. Uh, we're a vertically integrated uh, company. We have uh, breeding of animals. Uh, we do uh, the processing of uh, alpaca tops, uh, yarns. Uh, we have a knitting and weaving um, facilities. Uh, and we have uh, about 50 shops uh, for retail uh, throughout uh, Peru, Bolivia, Chile. Uh, we have uh, one outlet in China and another one in Australia. Uh, we have become over the years a, a key strategic partner in the supply chain for alpaca uh, in Peru and all over the world as well. We export to 50 countries uh, and plus, to Asia, uh, North and South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Europe, uh, uh, etc. No? We are also the first uh, vertical operation with God's Organic Alpaca Certification. Uh, and uh, we are a company that complies uh, socially uh, with uh, fair trade practices as well. Uh, I will pass you uh, next uh, um, a video that will give you a taste of the Andes, and then we will continue on with the presentation. Our ranch is a privately held property with the largest landscape in the Peruvian Andes. With more than 4,000 guacayo and suri alpacas, which comb the wetlands and generous grasslands, rich in microenvironments, which could be called the kingdom of the alpaca. This is what motivated us to make this place part of our history. In recent years, we have increased our efforts with regard to reproduction and selective breeding and extended it to livestock cooperatives and local communities. The ideal surroundings of the area and infrastructure at Malkini has allowed us to set up clinics, organize breeding workshops, and create projects aimed at genetic improvement, together with both Peruvian and foreign institutions. All this with the aim of increasing the alpaca population, improving the fiber, and ensuring the sustainability of this ranching sector for many years to come. The programs include the shearing. When the coat of fine fleece is separated using a combination of modern techniques and the traditional customs of the local population. Our ranch is a wonderful host.
The warmth of the guest house is inviting. Traditional materials blending with modern comforts for a rural feel decorated with good taste. Here the senses are sharpened by the beauty of nature and encourage you to adventure out into the open air and savour the Andean horizon. It's an unforgettable experience of being at one with the natural world and one that Malkini is keen to enrich and preserve. Okay, these are basic uh, facts that I think uh, you should know. Uh, alpaca lives uh, in the Andean Highlands uh, at about 3,000, 4,000 uh, meters above the sea level. Uh, they eat a combination of, uh, um, uh, of a low-fat low, uh, low uh, protein, uh, which grows in the highlands. It's, it's a grass that grows uh, wild in the highlands that has an influence over uh, the, the, the fiber, uh, which makes, makes it a very silk and soft, durable fiber with uh, very high thermal properties. One of the advantages is the, the range of uh, 24 natural shade that alpaca has, which uh, makes it uh, an eco and sustainable uh, environment where they live. This. Uh, these are the main the main types of alpacas. Uh, on on your uh, left hand, we have the huacayo, uh, which uh, represents about eighty eight percent of the population of alpacas. And on the right side, you have the suri, which represents about twelve uh, percent of the population of alpacas. The roughly about. Uh, uh, three and a half million uh, alpacas combined wakayas and suris in uh, in Peru. Uh, from these two animals, uh, you can uh, classify it into different qualities. And uh, on the center um, are the main qualities of uh, of alpaca that you can sort from both animals. Um, for instance, uh, baby alpaca represents about ten percent. Of, uh, of the output that you can uh, sort from, uh, from a fleece from an animal. And uh, it has 21 to 22 and a half microns. It's, I have to make it clear that baby alpaca is not from a baby animal. It's, it's called baby alpaca because it's the finest fiber that you can select from the fleece, from the blanket of, uh, of the animal. Uh, next, we have uh, the fleece, which is called FS, that uh, has about uh, 25 to 26 and a half microns in fineness, and it represents about 50% of the total uh, clip of the animal, or the total uh, fiber. Uh, next, we have the coarse fibers in, um, in the fleece, which is about 40% of, um, of, uh, of the content of uh, the whole clip, and it's uh, 30 microns in, in, in plus. In this chart, you can see on the on the right side uh, all the main applications that you can uh, do with alpaca fiber. Uh, for instance, um, baby alpaca and fleece, you can uh, you can uh, use it for hand knitting yarns or for weaving or for machine knitting yarns. Uh, coarse alpaca, you can do it for weaving for. Uh, you can do very uh, very nice fabrics also from coarse alpaca uh, for coats, and you can use it also for handcrafts. Whereas uh, suri, it's uh, you can do it for hand knitting, and the main usage of suri is for weaving for fabrics. Uh, all those uh, very lovely fabrics for uh, uh, coats that you have seen probably in the stores of Max Mara, with brushed uh, fiber uh, with the hair out. Uh, what some of them are made with uh, uh, mohair and some of them are made with alpaca. And then llama, uh, llama is, a, is another of the camelids in South America, 
but mainly the fiber is used for, uh, for handcrafts. Now, as far as market share, uh, the usage that, um, that the industry operates uh, for the fiber, uh, 35% of alpaca goes into hand knitting yarns, about 30% goes into machine knitting yarns, and 30% goes into apparel weaving, and 5% goes into uh, handcrafts. In this chart, uh, I want to show you um, the basic South American camelids. We have uh, uh, on the very left side, the vicuña, which is uh, one of the finest uh, fibers in the world, uh, between 12 to um, 14 microns. It's a wild animal that lives primarily in the, in the Peruvian Andes. You can find some vicuñas also in uh, Bolivia and some of them in the north of, uh, of Chile. Guanaco is another wild animal, very fine fiber, a little coarser than vicuña. It's uh, about uh, 14 to 16 microns. Uh, we have some population in Peru, but the main, the bulk of the population, I would say 95% of the guanacos, live in the southern part of, uh, of South America, in the, board, in the border between uh, Argentina and Chile. These are wild animals, these two animals. The next uh, two animals are the, the llamas, which are divided in, in two types, the llama cara and the llama chaco. Actually, these animals during the Inca Empire were used uh, as packing animals you know, to carry on uh, utensils or people moving from one place to another. They were, they were, uh, carrying, uh, they were carrying animals, actually. And further on in the, in the, in the colonial uh, times, uh, the Spanish used a lot of these animals uh, in the mines, in the minings. This is why the biggest population of llamas today are in Bolivia, because the Spanish uh, were exploiting uh, mines in Potosí, in, the, in Bolivia, and uh, they concentrated the, the, all the vast uh, majority of animals in that part of, uh, of South America, in Bolivia. Please. In this chart, um, what I want to show you is uh, uh, the whole value added chain of the Peruvian industry. Uh, I would say that uh, Peru, unlike uh, other countries that have natural fibers, Peru has really whole value added chain in a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a success case actually, you know. Uh, we start with the breeders, we go on with the, with the gathering of the fiber, the merchants, and then we have the industry that uh, produces the tops, the yarns, the knitting fabrics, and, and, and the, woven, uh, the woven fabrics, which are supplied uh, to the market and also to the, to the artisans, you know, in, 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 in this case. Um, and then the artisans sell to, to their markets, and the industry also sells to the shops, to the, uh, to the retail shops, and then it goes into e-commerce, uh, so the whole value added chain is um, is, uh, is 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 uh, it's it's a flow over here. No, it's uh, uh, Peru today um, represents uh, in South America. I would say uh, one of the most developed countries as far as uh, the textile industry is concerned. Uh, Brazil is is the, is is the leading one with the, with a big capacity of uh, of textile out, output. But uh, followed is, uh, following is, uh, is Peru. Why the Peruvian alpaca industry is sustainable? Alpaca is an animal that has a very low impact on the environment, very low uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, the claws of the animal do not cause any kind of erosion, uh, and the shearing happens once a year. Uh, alpaca breeding is looking uh, for the well being of the animal. Therefore, they live uh, in open spaces, in, eat uh, natural grown grasses, uh, and the shearing, as you know, is, 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 is done with, uh, with, with, uh, with care. Uh, it's a traceable fiber. You can find the origins quite uh, simply uh, of, uh, of, of the fiber, and it's traced throughout the whole process. And it's a biodegradable fiber as well. Uh, being a natural hair, it is friendly with nature, and degrades easily once disposed. 
uh, sustainability. Uh, this is a hot topic today, and it's a it's a it's a it's an issue that, uh, as a country and as an industry, we are dealing with it uh, uh, very. Um, uh, I would say very well, but uh, uh, unfortunately, a little bit slow. No, uh, social responsibility is uh, definitely uh, uh, an undertaking that most of the companies uh, in Peru are are are, are, pro are, are going through. No, uh, they have social programs, and uh, uh, they want to be identified with um, doing uh, um, a. a Social initiatives uh, through the the, uh, um, um, the environment where they are. Uh, sustainability reports. Uh, a lot of industries are going uh, sustainable. Uh, are putting their sustainable reports uh, online. Uh, this is something that uh, is happening, and and I think uh, uh, very very fast. No? Uh, likewise, uh, traceability. No. Uh, Traceability is one of the um, is one of the uh, the main um, the main issues uh, in in the industry, uh, both in uh, in alpaca and uh, in cotton. In um, uh, uh, many of the companies are offering today uh, sustainable uh, and traceable uh, products. Uh, uh, fair trade or uh, the fair trade logo is over here. Uh, a lot of companies are already, already um, um, uh, certified, you know, by by, by fair trade. It's not the majority of uh, of, uh, of of companies, but uh, but there, there is a wide range of, uh, of fair trade um, uh, certified companies. The on, on the lower part, um, you can see uh, the Peru Fair Trade uh, logo. Uh, Prom Peru has started off this initiative and uh, it's quite successful and a lot of companies have also uh, certified under the uh, Peru Fair Trade uh, uh, logo which basically uh, uses the same the same um, um, I would say pillars of uh, the World Fair Trade Organization uh, Ecotex Standard CN uh, 100, I'm sorry is one of the uh, is one of the widely used uh, um, certifications here in the whole industry, uh, as well as uh, uh, the GOTS um, uh, organic certified, but mainly uh, on the on the cotton on the cotton side, no, on the cotton industry in the alpaca uh, industry. Uh, I would say that the the organic certified alpaca. Uh, there's only one company, and, and it's our company uh, that has been certified uh, two years ago. Um, now, unfortunately, to be certified organic, you know, throughout the whole process in alpaca, uh, it's it's a very lengthy part process because uh, it starts uh, by the uh, fields, you know, the, the where the alpacas are. Uh, and, and this is a very, uh, very long uh, process. Uh, and also uh, the, the, the output of fiber certified is um, it's, uh, quite small. I mean, we, it's, it's in, uh, we are a beginner here and, uh, and I think uh, the industry will follow through in the next years. Uh, next, yeah. Why Peru textiles? No. Uh, some facts about uh, why you should pick uh, Peruvian textiles. Uh, well, on one hand, we have Pima cotton, and uh, Pima cotton uh, is one of the uh, finest cottons uh, in the world. It's very long, silky, and shiny. And Peru is one of the, the leading producing countries of <laughs> Pima cotton. Uh, likewise, we have alpaca. You know, uh, Peru is the center of the alpaca production in, uh, in the world. We have about 85% of, uh, of um, uh, the, um, the Peruvian, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the alpaca fiber uh, production. So these two fibers um, are practically the backbone of the, the Peruvian textile industry, uh, which uh, makes us an interesting um, uh, supplier for, for these two fibers. 
Also, uh, we are located in the, in the western coast of uh, Latin America, uh, and we we have uh, many uh, free trade agreements that we have uh, uh, developed over the past uh, 20 years. Uh, we have free, free trade agreements uh, with uh, most of the countries here in, in, uh, in America, uh, the U.S. And, uh, and Canada, and also with European countries. Um, we have signed up uh, uh, with the EU. Uh, so we don't have uh, duties for our ready-made garments and most of our yarns. Uh, we have a, a very innovative uh, um, a platform of, uh, of suppliers in the textile industry, both in the, in the, in the supply of yarns as far as the ready-made products and, and the um, and stores as well, retail, uh, retail shops. Uh, environmentally friendly and social responsible production. Uh, uh, yes, we are heading towards that. And not the whole supply chain is uh, is certified, as I said uh, earlier, but uh, the whole industry is heading towards that. Uh, we have a, a huge knowledge uh, of, uh, of textiles uh, dating back to more over two uh, thousand years or, or, or plus, no, starting with our pre-Inca culture and following with the with the Inca culture. So we have a lot of skills in that sector. Uh, and finally, we are uh, we have a vertically integrated uh, um, uh, supply chain in in, uh, in in the country, starting as I said earlier by the the, the sorting processing of the fiber and uh, a, a multiple platform of uh, knitters and weavers and uh, and apparel uh, makers. Uh, next, uh, some facts about. Um, about uh, the the the, uh, the alpaca industry, no. Uh, number number four, uh, one, uh, it's very innovative and modern. Uh, we have um, uh, a global um, a global production, you know, eighty uh, percent of uh, of uh, of uh, the fiber production is um, located here in Peru. Alpaca is a nat naturally. Uh, Hypoallergenic and and, and it's eco friendly. Uh, we have a variety of very competitive prices. Um, it is a very uh, light and, uh, and regulated uh, uh, temperature. You know, the, uh, the fiber. Um, uh, it promotes you know the the, the animal uh, welfare and um, efficient ethical practices. We have high labor uh, uh, standards. Uh, alpaca has a wide variety of, uh, of colors, uh, between 20 and, and 24 natural uh, tones undyed. Um, and it's widely used by uh, main designers uh, all over the world. Uh, and it's also a light and soft uh, uh, fiber, perfect for, for newborns. The best in sustainable uh, luxury. Uh, when it comes to, to softness, alpaca is uh, on par with cashmere and is rarer than, than cashmere. There, we have a, a, an output of about 4 million uh, um, uh, alpacas uh, living in Peru, uh, compared to approximately 450 million cashmere goats worldwide. Uh, the center for alpaca is Peru which is home of 80% of the global alpaca population. Uh, alpaca comes in 22 natural colors, actually it's between 20 and 24, uh, ranging from black uh, through a variation of, uh, of grays and browns uh, and going all the way into white. Um, this is a main characteristic of, and unique of, uh, of the animal. It can also be easily dyed into any color without losing its natural sheen and handle. Uh, alpacas are the greenest animals of all and not harsh on the environment, especially if compared to goats uh, and sheep. Uh, alpacas delicately nibble the tops of grasses and plants, leaving the roots safe to generate. 
Alpacas have uh, soft padded feet, no claws, nor hooves, and walk gently on the land. So not all, uh, not all harsh on their surroundings. Yeah, uh, uh, on this topic, the, 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 the analogy that we want to, to, to bring is that unlike Kashmir that practically uh, erodes the, the, the grounds when they eat the grasses, uh, alpacas feed on natural grass, which is, uh, which is in the highlands and uh, that uh, renovates quite easily. So it's, it's not harmful to, uh, to the environment, uh, the, the pastures that, uh, that they eat. Alpacas uh, provide a superior thermal insulation when compared to other fibers. Uh, this is a result of, uh, of the way the alpacas fleece has adapted over time to combat the big temperatures swinging in the highlands, high above the three line where, where the alpaca lives. The temperature ranges from minus four Fahrenheit at night to plus uh, 70 Fahrenheit in the daytime, in the same day. Uh, here are some of the brands that currently source uh, or have been sourcing from Peru. We have uh, Prada, Peruvian uh, uh, Connection, Eileen Fisher, Chanel, Adolfo Dominguez, Carolina Herrera, Max Mara, Muji, Kokai, uh, Donna Karen, uh, Kenzo, Cortefiel, Free People, Hermes, among other brands that uh, currently source uh, here in Peru. Yep. In, uh, I want to close by showing you the two brands, uh, the two alpaca marks that we uh, market uh, worldwide. One is the alpaca um, uh, from Peru, Alpaca del Peru, on your right side. And on the left side is the uh, uh, International Alpaca Association that is also used. So thank you very much for your, uh, for your time. And uh, any questions, I'll be glad after the, the whole presentation is done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, Juan. And now it's the turn of Mayra Navarrete. As I told you all, she is our specialty note speaker, and she lives actually in Denmark, and she works for for some uh, important uh, brands, mostly uh, with home. So now it's turn of Mayra. Thank you so much, Mayra. Uh, you're welcome, Amora. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, in contact with an international community. As uh, we know, all the sourcing efforts are about that precisely. Um, thanks, uh, uh, Juan. The presentation was uh, very extensive in terms of understanding the alpaca. I, I really enjoy it. Actually, I enjoy it every time everybody goes deep into what... Uh, the alpaca industry means uh, in terms of uh, sustainability, especially. Uh, what I would like to share uh, today is the experience of uh, sourcing from Peru and that uh, we find it uh, quite uh, a smart uh, move that we did. We're working with uh, uh, brands and uh, I mean, so, uh, sourcing from, from for different brands uh, from uh, India, from uh, uh, Vietnam, Turkey. And uh, when uh, coming to Denmark after six years uh, living in, in India, one of the issues, uh, it was to leverage probably for the uh, company, the opportunity to get close to uh, Latin America and the production in Peru, only because of the language perhaps. But uh, this is going far beyond, and uh, and and what had actually happened, it's a uh, it's a very interesting process. So let's uh, continue with this idea, uh, please, please. Um, what we have understood right now about fashion in the times of of uh, uh, COVID nineteen is not precisely this story of uh, the love in times of cholera. We were not at all prepared at, uh, for what it is happening. And uh, the learnings of this, uh, of course, have been very harsh in all of us. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, we have been requested to have the flexibility and we have asked for flexibility to the people that we are sourcing from. Uh, we have to, of course, uh, show some resilience uh, during these times and uh, the creativity uh, to come up in, 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 in all this process, dealing with all the different sources that we were having and how slowly, slowly, everything was closing down. Uh, I remember the time like uh, from sourcing from India, one of our, our producers says, uh, yeah, I'm working, but I don't have the raw materials. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in, into this. Uh, so all these require a lot of interaction and resources to place on this. And what we noticed, it was interesting um, that because of this diversification that we were able to provide and to have before, we were ones of the less affected companies on uh, bringing to our customers their, their uh, uh, stock. And um, this agile system of also of the diversification happened because of sourcing from all different uh, places. And especially it was a time when Peru became a key partner for us in, in this uh, sourcing. Um, we needed to accept, of course, that we were not prepared for everything. And uh, there are still so many challenges going on, but that uh, we should continue with uh, uh, this uh, conversation, continuous conversation with all providers to be able to fit into the challenges and the needs of these new uh, conditions. So next please, Liz. We started uh, four years ago, connecting these two worlds. As I mentioned, it was uh, only with the idea of leveraging the language. And there was a romantic idea of what it is Peru and what it is or this, this world that we were be sourcing for uh, is Scandinavia, basically. And, uh, but the reality that we found was something else. And next, please. Because Peru is already uh, ahead in, in terms of uh, their production and all their uh, chain uh, value and, and, and supply, it's uh, uh, very well fitting into what we were looking for. So the process it has been a very interesting one uh, when visiting Peru up to the time when we started production because uh, it was all uh, set along the support of uh, Prom Peru. We got the uh, meetings with different suppliers, with the source of the raw material to understand what it is the material, where it is coming from. We got an amazing uh, uh, quantity of, of information color swatches, um, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, this, this um, uh, swatches were so important at the time, but uh, uh, to create the looks, and that's one of the things that we also appreciated how much the uh, industry was aware of the trends and that they were uh, uh, matching the trends to be uh, up there with the colors of, of uh, seasons and the colors that we needed to work with. Um, and uh, the different uh, type of threads that we were going to use and the access to different types uh, in, in terms of, of size and skills and abilities and capacity of the uh, producers. Next, please, Liz. So, um, at the very beginning, the question uh, was, uh, why then should, should we move some of this production to, to Peru? And um, it was uh, all about this uh, link to the supply uh, chain that uh, they were having everything in there. Uh, 
Uh, there is a fantastic source of the raw material, uh, whether it's alpaca or the pima cotton. Both materials are uh, a high quality material. Already, uh, Juan introduced us to the qualities and the characteristics of the alpaca, but there is also the pima cotton, which is considered one of the best uh, cottons uh, already in the industry. And also with uh, organic uh, um, uh, certifications for many of the producers. We also find that the production facilities uh, were diverse and of every scale. Uh, minimum ordered uh, quantities will vary and that will allow us also to work with different brands that they needed to just a piece for their whole collection to be in knitwear or that they will develop the whole line with knitwear for their uh, collections. Um, we also found uh, very uh, good certification agencies that could work with us because uh, of course, when working remotely, the issue is that we need some uh, verifications on the production and uh, and the uh, verification of uh, quantities and the uh, colors and etc. You you know very well what does it mean to have an agency that can support. Um, at the very beginning, we did many many trips. Um, uh, we were meeting, of course, people at the um, events organized by Prom Peru, like uh, Peru Moda. But uh, the travels with uh, our designers, the travels with uh, uh, the people also from logistics were important uh, steps into moving uh, some of the production to, to Peru. Uh, and these certifications agencies uh, uh, became key in in the in the uh, possibility of you know slowly letting this production to to be up all in in uh, in terms of of uh, uh, the the process all in the hands of of uh, the Peruvians, and then we found also as well a very good logistic network. Network they they were supporting in every step from swatches to uh, samples to uh, the whole production, the distribution. We do not only receiving one port, but we need it in different ports and all the documents and papers were handled uh, easily and for different also in different uh, um, uh, ways of, of transporting, whether by sea, by air, uh, well, not train in this case, but but uh, uh, it was it was a, a, a very good uh, network, and and it, and it is very uh, easy to deal with. Uh, we were of course uh, aware of all the times in producing documents and etc. But even our own producers had the experience, and they were letting us know that if we have this day as a due day for so-and-so uh, transportation uh, time and etc., we needed to have these documents, we needed to have this information, etc., and they were handling this so very easily. So the whole process uh, for supply, it was uh, uh, possible to find in Peru uh, to a very high standard to the levels that uh, we needed uh, this. Um, of course, I have to say that in every country, uh, in the, the industry, it's, it's quite different. Uh, so you have to be able to talk with uh, every producer on how do they do things and to make sure and even share um, uh, um, let's say, uh, 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 some sort of a standards in terms of communication, uh, specifications and et cetera, to be able to understand and clear uh, most of the things. Because uh, for instance, uh, assuring or confirming uh, uh, production 
for somebody in India means uh, it's done certain way from somebody in Turkey is made another way. Somebody in Vietnam is made differently and somebody in Peru is made different as well. So all these terms have to be agreed and discussed so that there will not be surprises. Um, there is a very uh, use expression that it's uh, nothing like common sense, but it's the sometimes it's, 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 it's the uh, lack of, of these uh, visions that make us guess uh, about things. Uh, and, and, and if we are starting a new collaboration, uh, there should not be guessing in, in this. So next, please, Liz. And then um, there was um, even more important uh, uh, characteristic of all this uh, reasoning on why we should start working with Peru. And it was the value addition at source, and especially with the alpaca. Um, we were concerned already of working with uh, this uh, non-sustainable, it's no longer sustainable source of uh, uh, cashmere and, and several sheep. So we needed something, and especially for the weather uh, up here in the north, in the Scandinavia, that could be uh, having the features uh, enough to uh, provide a comfort and a good looking piece. Uh, we are in fashion. Uh, nobody buys only because it feels good or because it's sustainable. At the very end is fashion. So the alpaca was offering us these characteristics, but why not to produce directly in Peru and create all this uh, value uh, right there at the source of, of these products? You have seen already how the um, sourcing uh, of many things is changing. And those initiatives where uh, the value addition get, stays in where the material comes from are the ones supporting much more social impact and of course, environmental impact. You're not transporting a bulk of material that probably it's going to be discarded. Some of this, you are transporting the final product and with a much more efficient way. Uh, the value addition at the source also allows a series of providers and contributors of the industry in Peru to grow directly from the source that you know 80% of the uh, global population of alpacas is based in Peru. So it's their natural resource. And that's what we wanted to uh, contribute also with the initiative and sourcing from Peru is to create this value right there at the source. Uh, the what what um, uh, Juan presented us all these things and how integrated are from the alpaca breeders from uh, the people who is working uh, in the in the uh, making of the jars and making of the of the products uh, hand uh, uh, needed or industrially needed. It's a it's 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 a it's a big industry, and they are getting more and more uh, efficient and with much men, much skills also. That uh, if we will only take this uh, raw material and produce it somewhere else. Uh, this has been also some of the issues that we consider uh, in, in the quality of what we were uh, starting to, to do at that moment, but uh, verifying that uh, the industry, uh, it's always into innovation and willing to understand and learn what it is that they, they can do. I have been in the remote areas in, in Peru sourcing for the um, uh, alpaca. 
uh, and looking through all the chain and seeing who does this process, who does this other one to better understand and, and integrate all this in what we are uh, producing. Um, and, and, and there is a, 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 a characteristic, very interesting, which is at the very beginning, everybody thought that uh, because of the Spanish, I was the only one to come. Now, everybody in the company wants to go to Peru. Uh, designers are like, like, oh, this is, this is uh, the, the chance I have to go. You know, I have designed this. I want to see how is this done. I want to check on the prototypes. Yes, you want to travel to Peru. Uh, I, everybody says that they are fascinated with the culture, uh, how friendly people are, how much support they get, whatever questions are there. And, uh, and of course, the food. So yeah, that's that was at the very end one of the benefits of uh, choosing Peru to have this amazing food uh, every time we we go there. Uh, but uh, back to the practical issues, um, as I said, there were uh, all these uh, aspects about uh, um, the knowledge of the industry, but there was also this important. Um, aspect which is uh, creating value at the source the next place um I think uh, Juan was uh, talking very deeply about this but these were the five aspects in terms of sustainability that were important for us this uh, was about the longevity of the fiber because it's a very resistant uh, fiber. So we could offer a product to tell the people this is going to last. You will inherit this uh, cardigan or this sweater uh, to your grandchild eventually, if you want. <laughs> um, the high performance also that the alpacas have because they produce 15, 20 times more material per year than cashmere, for instance, we were comparing to that material in terms of the quality. Uh, we also noticed that we were going to deliver to the customers a product with reduced uh, uh, need of washing. They don't need to wash uh, their cardigans or sweaters, knitted pieces as uh, frequently. Uh, also the uh, aspect of uh, they are natural hypoallergenic. And, and that was also key because uh, we noticed that a lot of people could not use uh, wool or cashmere because they react uh, with allergies. And then they go to synthetic fibers and that's uh, the problem. We are saying uh, uh, with this product, we don't have to go to uh, synthetic products. We are uh, providing an, a natural pro uh, product that will eventually biodegrade in the uh, environment if it hits uh, the ocean, for instance, with microparticles, it will not damage uh, the environment as plastic uh, does. Uh, when, especially when 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 washing, because we can say, okay, uh, if it's uh, uh, processed and and uh, incinerated, uh, will not create that. Uh, but the fact is that in uh, the washing process, it creates microparticles. And uh, uh, also um, the low environmental impact that alpacas uh, have, that it was uh, deeply explained by Juan in his presentation. Uh, all these grassing practices that we've seen in the alpacas, the water consumption and uh, how the herding happens uh, were the convincing factors of uh, uh, stepping in a sustainable uh, fiber and a sustainable production. And that's what we also look into all or the producers to have the, the work and the vision towards sustainability. And the next place, which is just my thanks to this. And I want to leave some minutes at least for question and answers. We're... Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe before going uh, going to questions and answers, I can I can do some 
I want to quote some of your intervention as well as once. So let's say that alpaca, first of all, is the nobility of the alpaca wool, its special features, the high performance, and the reduced need of washing, first of all. Second, the sustainability of the fiber and the low environmental impact. Three, they do it ahead in terms of production. Uh, our, or our industry is aware of, of trends, let's say so as colors, th um, threads, season, etc. The ability, five, the ability and capacity of those involved in the sector, knowledge of the industry, and also the creativity that uh, our um, the people involved also. And the third is that Peru has uh, the, the sixth, sorry, Peru has high standards to support um, foreign companies uh, with the logistic network. So I think that uh, maybe this is a whole panorama. So from the high, the excellent source of raw material up to the high standards to support you, uh, uh, foreign companies with all the logistic network and why Peru is such, can be such a good partner for your uh, companies. Yeah, I, I do have one question. My name is Charles from Fashion United. Yes, hello, Charles. Um, I, I got a question about uh, sustainability, Juan. Uh, you told something about the sustainability and it's really difficult to acquire it. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that one? Well, um, uh, talking about sustainability, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of companies are already doing sustainability reports uh, and putting them on their websites. And uh, we are in the process of, of launching our sustainability report as a company. Uh, that's one step. Um, uh, now, sustainability reports are very much, uh, I would say, a trend today, you know, for companies because they like to be transparent on the practices all over the, uh, the the company and with the stakeholders. So um, uh, this is one point that uh, I would say it's it's not difficult. I mean, it's time consuming, and uh, and you have to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, maybe changes or modifications to the processes that you have. But that's one thing that it's more accessible, I would say. Uh, to the companies uh, now talking about uh, other certifications uh, that's what i what i said that uh, it might be a little bit lengthy or or it, it could take some time to get the certifications uh, uh, not everybody has ecotex 100 for instance which is the main uh, certification for um, uh, friendly textiles you know, but uh, but a lot of companies already do because they take uh, care of all the dye stuffs and the chemicals that they put into their their uh, their uh, the products. Uh, I think the whole textile industry uh, has uh, uh, for alpaca has uh, Ecotex standard 100 because uh, most of the uh, I would say 99% of the suppliers of uh, chemicals or dye stuffs come from Europe. And uh, and they comply with uh, with uh, Ecotex uh, 100. Uh, now, if we move to other certifications, fair trade, for instance, uh, the, most of the companies are getting online uh, with the, with this certification. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It's also costly. So uh, uh, you will find that not everybody in the trade has that certification. But uh, we're on our way for that. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that answered uh, your question. Yeah, yeah, that definitely answers my question. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody more that want to make some questions? Uh, my name is uh, Lelia. And I, uh, the question that I have, it's uh, maybe for Juan or Mayra. If they are working in the Scandinavian uh, country already, or if they are open for new lines uh, to try to new products with uh, alpaca wool, or maybe combined with another um, natural fibers. 
Um, yes, we have been working with uh, the alpaca mixed uh, or, or blend. It's called a blend with uh, mm -hmm. with cotton already, and the performance has been very very good in terms of of uh, what it is possible to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, one of the most. Then the other blends uh, that uh, we have seen and uh, not really using that much uh, because of the mixture with uh, 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 synthetic materials. But those mm -hmm. most of the time are the, uh, the type of threads that it's uh, getting closer to like the fantasy threads, like more puffy, much more uh, um, uh, with a series of loops of hair, etc. But if you keep it, uh, the blends, like for instance, using the, the cotton, blend with cotton, blend with uh, uh, even merino, merino has uh, is being used in in some of the threads. By the way, I think it's Mitchell the one who is uh, producing this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it is possible, and the uh, it's uh, it's outstanding the performance that they have. Yes, mm -hmm. but um, sorry, what did I answer the question or? With something yes, uh, yes, you did. But another part, if you are open for it to to create new lines of the clothes, I would like to uh, to make clothes without synthetic um, stuff because, as uh, you have mentioned already, everybody is so busy with environment and sustainability. And then my concept is to use it, especially alpaca wool. And yeah. of course, cotton. We have tried with bamboos, or I didn't find yet the company in Peru uh, that I would like to work with. And that's why I'm really interested in because uh, I am um, in the countries where they really love the wool, but they don't know so much about alpaca wool. Also, yeah. they know, but it's only like uh, sweaters or uh, like people yes. can make something with the yarn, but no more. Yes. I fully understand that because when we started uh, here in the market, it was incredible the response of people about the alpaca. The impression that it was here, it was about that uh, poncho of the 60s, like looking a little bit like a hippie style and coarse material. Yeah. And it was like, no, 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 that's not the alpaca. You know, the industry has uh, gone in incredible way to get this refined material. So I I understand mm -hmm. that that and 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 that's our challenge here to convince the market about this uh, high quality material and and uh, stay. Uh, you know, a little bit away from this concept of the 60s and 70s, because the ponchos are still there. You know, I, I, I have been, it's incredible, yeah. but they are still there in some closets. The people is coming and showing it to me and says, oh, yes, I have an alpaca poncho. And it's like, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You have like a souvenir <laughs> only, but that I want to change that idea. Yes. But of course, I need the, um, I need the group. I need the people that really want to work with. I'm come from Peru. Uh, from the north in Camarca Chota is the province, yes. uh, but I'm living in Norway for 12 years, so I now decide to do something with uh, okay. our natural fibers, and then uh, that's really interesting. And I feel like you have uh, spoken uh, quite good about the process about the um, resource, natural resource we have, and also Juan mentioned really the um, the properties and how the company is, but it's not so easy to come in contact with you or, or I don't know, maybe I have taken the wrong, uh, I try it, but it's like uh, you cannot for, uh, go forward to the person that really decides, you always come to the secretary or something that should be uh, possible to yeah. be more often. Uh, yeah. Well, your best link is from Peru. A model well, that is here, she can lead you to uh, different producers 
and mm-hmm. to understand what it is the chain, what it is the, for instance, the role of uh, Juan in this, uh, uh, and the, depending on the type of production that you are thinking, uh, they will link you directly with the producers uh, mm-hmm. that uh, will, will be there. Yes. Thank you, Maya. I was just willing to to also uh, tell you something. Uh, Lelian, thank you so much for your question. Maybe we can have a, 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 a talk in another uh, stage, uh, maybe through email or a Skype if you want. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank you, so much. There, thank you so much. I don't know if there are more questions. Uh, hi, hello everyone. My name is Grace from Graciela Guam. I want to make a question about uh, if it's possible uh, to use the logo of Alpaca del Peru as an icon in a web shop. Because, for instance, my brand is a, is a Dutch Peruvian brand and it's produced in Peru uh, with Peruvian fibers, supplied by Michel. So I think it's a, a very good support probably for brands like uh, I have or for other ones to use this icon, but I would like to know if it's possible. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, the, the, the logo, the Alpaca del Peru logo, is a property of uh, Pro Peru. And uh, uh, they, they have the right to... to to, uh, okay. to give you the, the rights, sorry, again, uh, to use the logo. Uh, I don't think there should be a uh, I think uh, Igor uh, would be the right person to request the usage of, uh, of the logo from Alpaca del Peru. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very good, you know, to to make an exposure of, uh, of the logo in your products, because that really represents, uh, you know, the, that the product is made with alpaca. You know? So I think the right person should be Igor Rojas. Maybe you can channel that uh, through Mora. In, uh, yes, of course. Uh, Lisbeth wants to add something with that, and so yes. we can close the webinar as well. Yes. Hi, Graciela. How are you? Hope you're fine. Yes, Hello, just, uh, just to add uh, a little more about your question. Uh, yes, we already we have uh, the all the process uh, to give uh, the, the, our, the authorization to the Peruvian brands to use the Alpaca del Peru. So please uh, send me an email. Uh, I will contact you with the right person because uh, we are working very hard in this. Uh, and right uh, this year, at the start of this year, at the beginning of this year, uh, we already have the process. So it will be very happy for us to, to start with you. We, we know that, that you already have a, a Peruvian brand there and uh, well, just keep in contact and we will continue with the process. Mm-hmm. Okay, super, so, thank you so much. Thank you, Graciela. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank stay, you very stay much. Stay safe. Bye-bye. bye-bye.